welcome back trust you all well so today's video is going to be an interior render tutorial using Lumion so there's not going to be much of uh, modeling I mean I'm not going to show you the modeling bits because I believe most of the viewers watching are quite well equipped equipped sorry with modeling in SketchUp and Lumion I mean SketchUp and 3ds Max and therefore I've decided to cover the other bits this video is specially dedicated to Mr. Ricky Bard who has asked me on Facebook in Lumion Tips and Tricks to cover uh, interior render tutorial and therefore I've decided to do so and yeah so this ren this rendering tutorial is kind of special because uh, I, I've seen a lot of realistic renders and most of them use sunlight inside the room and things like that and so I've decided to cut out the sunlight in Lumion and give it a try with the artificial lights and as you all know Lumion has a bit of a few limitations I wouldn't say a bit of a few limitations uh, in terms of artificial lights because they don't cast proper shadows I mean they don't cast any shadows in the older versions actually the plain light or the omni lights and therefore you just you're just left with the IES lights you have to depend on them to actually light up your entire scene which is kind of challenging and therefore I've decided to cover that what if you have a night scene and you're inside the house what, what would it look like the bedroom and so yeah I've done that I worked it out fairly well hopefully and hopefully you'll find this video tutorial useful so follow along and to those who are new to my channel and if you do like my content then please do like subscribe and share my videos in order to keep me motivated and also to all my subscribers I love you all thank you so the modeling was fairly simple I just I've just used the the box option in max of here and with that i converted that to a poly and created three three walls around and then i've modeled the rest of the thing as well i modeled that using spline and that using another box boolean that out and this using a few lines really there's nothing much this is from chaos cosmos v-ray I've, I've actually done this scene as a 3ds max v-ray render tutorial in another video if you check out my channel it's probably there and it's it's a quick uh, tutorial without much talking and stuff like that in that is this musical tutorial and I've downloaded that from 3d sky the ceiling was simple false ceiling with again cosmos items there and boolean in there and then curtains from cosmos and that flat pot from cosmos again and nothing else really so this was a max model that I had. All I did was went to file, export, export. I, I, I exported that as, that as a, yeah, it might show up as a lime exporter. I tried that, but it wasn't working properly, my lime exporter. And so I've just decided to directly export it as an FBX. And I did so. And then I went straight into Lumion. And obviously this is what you see is already textured here. I'm just gonna go over the textures properly so that you know actually I'm gonna change the textures textures uh, one by one so that you can follow along as well and carry it out by yourself so yeah uh, we're gonna start off with the since we have the model here I mean in order to import a model I hope you all know that and um, yeah most of you will know it for sure import new model name it save it in a folder and yeah then place it on a scene so I have this I have loaded down this example scene yeah, you'll, you'll find I'm, and, and I'm using Lumion 11 actually so yeah so this is the scene I'm using and therefore let's get started with that so the texturing part let's start texturing so do it as I do it start with the texturing bit so let's go for another wooden texture let's go with that then yeah and let's let's keep so that that's the values for my white it's a standard material I use and of course don't forget to use a bit of weathering and a bit of edges which I did not and you should be doing that always because nothing in the real world has perfect corners again 
so that's the white part I've reduced the gloss and the reflectivity because it was way too reflective for the glass I've kept a, I don't know what kind of color is that but a reddish tint to that dark reddish tint orange tint actually and I've increased the reflectivity let's increase the reflectivity a little more yeah something like that for the metal I've reduced the gloss entirely and I've used the dark orange in order to get that look if you'd like you can change it so let's change actually let's change it so yeah I want a different look for example I want that suppose yeah let's keep that for now again the carpet is from chaos cosmos I've used their material directly except that I've turned the gloss down for the bed I just want to give you a tip if you're using chaos cosmos items in your max models or sketchup models make sure you show whole mesh for example this one uh, they're all converted to poly now and I'm sure you, you're getting my point what I'm trying to say you need to show the entire mesh show that there's an option over here which shows the whole mesh and after you do that you will find they're kind of jagged actually they don't they have these hard edges in order to get rid of that I just simply typed in smooth the smooth modifier and clicked on one and it actually smoothens out quite well so yeah so do that and collapse that collapse to click on yes and you should be good to go and then re-import your model in Lumion which will make it look better actually but I'm not gonna do that for now you can do you can go ahead and do that for this again I used another standard material with a bit of gloss and a bit of reflectivity this was an em emissive material with a bit of orange tint in it that's my emissive value there but again they're all paired in the same texture for the bed I used a cloth material again from the Lumion library there's nothing out from the outside so it's everything I've done everything from the Lumion library if you feel like you can go ahead get your own materials and use it over here so yeah, I've used that one under indoor fabric second tab uh, third row I've used that one for the curtains I've used a transparent bit for the middle and I've, I've actually used that that polygon material from the Lumion interior library and I changed the color to uh, orange I give it orange just tint actually and then for that one again the same thing you can change that color if required actually you can change that yeah let's just copy that paste it there yeah and yeah that that was it really for the model and nothing else this was again another standard material I used with a bit of gloss bit of reflectivity and nothing else yeah. so that's the entire model I mean that's the entire texturing part and for this wall again I used this uh, plaster the interior plaster and that was that and I turned and I gave it a gray color so yeah so that's the entire interior scene that you're looking at and nothing else in there so I'm just gonna click on okay but now comes the important part where I use the lights how do you use them I use a bit of, so yeah first things first I actually place the Nomni light over here give it a bit of brightness and a bit of fall off that helped me light up the scene a little bit but just make sure that brightness is not too high because you'll have particularly somewhere here because it's right on top of the bed you might see the bed suddenly lighting up so I used Nomni light over here that's the first thing I did and I reduced that brightness kept give it a a slight orange tint and for the other IES lights I use that one with a bit of brightness again the brightness is just six of you the brightness value and plain lights on top for the false ceiling and all around you know your proper IES lights outside I've kept a light but I'm not using it anymore because I, I didn't want any outside light coming in so I actually set the brightness to one there so it doesn't come in at all and so that was it that glass over there is a reddish tinted glass so I use that and turn the colorization down that's it really nothing else in that model so let's get into the rendering bit the settings that I use in order to get that render to achieve that render what would you do so this was the settings I used which helped me get through the uh, rendering process otherwise the entire model was you know it was just coming out dark completely 
when I turn it. Let me, we'll do it from scratch. I'll be storing another camera at the same angle and we'll do it from scratch. So store that. And the moment you do that, you should be having that with a focal length of 55. Store that and set this angle up in your camera. Now go to custom style, go to realistic. And the moment you do that bang. And because I do not have a wall this on this side on behind the camera you will have sunlight coming in so in order to fix that and since we are doing a night scene over here you can go to real skies select night select that and rotate that I'll oh, keep that there and have a look at it and see see it's completely dark so this is a, this is a problem I was getting actually because without the Sun that's what the scene looks like so we're gonna fix that now so since you've done that already turn the brightness down of the to 0 0.5 of the real skies and check it again so that's that so that's your scene setup so next the next item on list is we're gonna go to directly do color correction and turn that uh, temperature down to zero because we'll handle the temperature in post processing again so I'll you keep that neutral and click on that and see again it's still dark remember that brightness to 0.7 is fine turn the contrast yes you need to turn the contrast up because you'll know why after this and turn the keep that value to 0.9 there now you're going to play with this over here gamma correction pump that up to 1.1 check it again still not bright enough limit height turn that to 0.8 still dark so go back so the next one is hyperlight turn on enable enable in preview and turn the hyperlight up to 85 percent see you're starting to get that secondary bounce i explained in my i explained this hyperlight uh, the entire settings actually in another video which is i think two hours i think long the entire lumion settings all explained there so make use of those uh, settings the tutorial and use these hyperlight settings and everything to get that secondary bounce out so after the hyperlight uh, let that be at one yeah don't touch that you don't need these because you don't have them you don't have the skylight anywhere over here that's that shadow effect keep that at zero where it is keep that to same i'm going to turn that up to 0 0.8 let that be let that be let that be and check again it's okay but it's still not there so the next thing obviously lumion introduced that in previous versions as well is a game changer go to add effects and of course you're going to use global illumination the moment you do that you should see a difference here how so you're going to go to edit select these ies lights so see you see they're like they're marked like a, it's like a band sign so you, all you have to do is get those ticks up for them select all of them not exactly all of them but yeah i'm just going to select all of them and you can give it a try without selecting and things like that turn up the gi amount for the spotlights yeah, somewhere there yeah quite happy there so you can see the difference already with the help of that and go back to your camera view again and you should have a lit up scene actually now you have the so now the best part is now that you have an entire scene lit up with the help of global illumination you can now completely control your scene with the help of this effect so it's it's a way to get around in lumion for night scenes and you can use the fall off to adjust that that's the best part so i'm quite happy with that of course you can add few more settings to it I'm gonna go with that setting and add a bit of sharpen go back there add a few reflection planes I'm not gonna add a reflection plane over here because it might land up reflecting the trees because my scene is open and at the back there's no back wall there I'm gonna add one reflection plane there and a refle reflection plane on the floor that's it really Oh, you, if you want, if you still want, you can add one reflection plane there. 
So that's three reflection planes. That one is not required. It's not. Uh, that I think Speed Ray can handle that easily. The rest is the scene is almost done. You could say J except except the texturing bit. So that's that. Let's change the color of the curtain because I want to change the scene a bit. Let's keep that as gray. And yeah. And let the illumination do all the work. You have to do literally nothing in this uh, in order to achieve that look, you know, the interior look. Again, you can go back to... Now you can see that it's, it's washed out, kind of washed out. You can increase the contrast here itself. Go with a bit more contrast and it should look nice. Much better than before, isn't it? So that's that. And now that you have, you can go back to global illumination and give it a try. Try your own effects of here. You can reduce spots. You can, I mean, there's max. Of, of course, you don't have the sun here, so it's just you follow speed that you have to adjust it by. And we're going to render this out. But before we render it out, and I'm going to add, you can re you can use the print post and answer for 4K quality and above. And I'm just going to add the, you know, artistic to the analog color lab actually because that gives that creates it gives a good effect to the scene doesn't it it changes the feel actually like i mentioned in my previous videos turn that down to 0 0.7 and let's have a look at that ah look at that you could use the 0.1 value or you could use the 0.9 i generally prefer the 0.9 at uh, at an amount of 0.3 yeah i kind of like this I kind of enjoyed this look actually but again it's up to you you've, you've you've got a lot of options over here and but let's let's just give it a try with point 0.1 for now and turn that up to point 0.6 yeah I kind of like that and actually turn that down a bit would that be at point 0.5 and let's turn the saturation down a bit actually that's at point 0.9 yep you could do that or you could go for saturation one that's what i figured out for my models you could leave your saturation at one and you could go for the analog color lab at point nine not not one point nine and let the amount do the talking of your saturation because i think point nine gives you that uh, it reduces the sat saturation in your scene you can see that there you go it's actually fading out uh, so you can use like a 0.6 or something it could kind of get dark again you can adjust that with the help of the global illumination but it does come with the it does come with a bit of taxing on your graphics card because yeah this definitely slows down my working process because as you can see it actually slowed down my entire scene it does have an effect on the entire scene so now that's ready i'm going to render that out and i'll see you in the so for, yeah before i say i see you before you render out make sure you have the lighting map and the specular reflection map because these two are going to play a big role in your uh, post processing so i'll see you in the post processing bit so it has been rendered out and i've got my lighting map and my specular map in open up in photoshop but before we get into the post-processing, I'd like to share something with you, which is kind of important. If you think that Lumion settings will get you far, I mean, in a way you're wrong. Because if you're modeling, if you're texturing, if they're not right, or you're lighting, if they're not right, I mean, you, could, it, you cannot go far as a 3D artist. You need to make sure your modeling is as good as your rendering techniques, because eventually at the end of the day if your modeling is subpar you might not actually get that realistic look and yeah so concentrate more on your modeling rather than the settings of lumion i mean settings can obviously you can tweak them and learn them easily but modeling is what counts and the way you carry out your uv mapping and things like that but anyway but obviously the settings are important for this night tutorial because yeah, if you use the same technique, you can probably light up your scene without the help of 
the sunlight so let's get into it then so I've got my lighting map and I always tell everyone that use these maps make use of these maps so drag the specular map over here drag that on top of your diffuse map and position it correctly change unlock that layer the diffuse map layer make a copy of the diffuse map layer and then go to your reflection map and set your reflection map to screen and the moment you do that you see the difference the moment you set that to screen you can see the difference straight away and you can actually adjust that uh, reflection value the amount of reflection you need by changing the opacity or the fill okay, so the moment you're happy with your reflections in the model which is very important then drag the lighting map on top of the reflection map I mean the entire set and adjust that carefully the lighting map what I found out is that it actually helps give you the uh, the contrast so you do not actually figure out the contrast by yourself. it actually helps you that concept but how do you do that is by going to your lighting map layer and setting that to some people set it as overlay but I believe overlay creates really dark really contrasted images and therefore I like soft light which is much softer you can change you can change the opacity and you can already see the difference there so set that there and turn the opacity down to somewhere around 50 percent something close to I mean 60 percent should be fine and if you require uh, to bring it further bring it down further then and whatever you like really you have the uh, you have the control over your contrast basically with the, with the help of the lighting map and the light coming out of the scene the expectation that you want to have which you might not get with the camera raw filter and therefore so once you're happy with your lighting I and mean, your maps and everything merge them together by selecting all three of them right click merge layers and you can see the difference with your rendered image and once you're there you, and if your scene still looks very saturated and stuff like that you can go to camera raw filter wait 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 wait, wait. yeah go to camera raw filter and I'm not going to play with the I'm going to turn the temperature down a little bit actually minus two looks fine to me yeah for the contrast you can give it a bit more contrast or you can turn that down but I'm gonna turn that down a bit somewhere on minus three highlights turn the highlights down a little bit because that's what the highlights does actually so keep it at around 10 13 whatever shadows bring the shadows down again if required whites down because the whites are way too white and the blacks you can bring the black suffering up to like plus three or something clarity gives you I'm, I'm sure you guys are quite familiar with the Photoshop part so give it a bit of clarity don't touch the D here because then it basically creates that kind of effect in the interior scene yeah vibrance let the vibrance be at zero because we want a neutral tone in our scene and play with the saturation take the saturation down to minus five then go to sharpen I'm kind of happy with the lighting so therefore I'm going to touch the lighting just a bit of if you zoom in there and if you look what sharpen so that's what sharpen does so be careful with your sharpen you get a bit of sharpen and use the luminance that actually makes your render softer and turn that to 80 somewhere on the 85 5 ish range and you see there's a mistake over here in my model and I've actually got that curtain cutting through mine and that's again you can correct that I've just noticed that keep that somewhere there and that somewhere there yeah and fit in view that looks kind of fine go to saturation if you would like your red to be more saturated you can saturate that uh, or change the hue overall if required you can make that like that and again I'm going to turn the orange factor down the yellow factor as well a little lower than that somewhere there because I like it I felt like it's too saturated for that goldish look and yes yeah, so that's that really and I have not done you can turn the blanket the bluish thing down yep click on ok once you're happy so that's your entire scene if you want to tweak it further you can go ahead and tweak it further and export that as a PNG so I'm going to name that final 3 so F3 
And it should be there. Where's F3? There you go. So that was it really guys and I'm gonna leave the model down in the description. Go give it a try by yourself and yeah, you can comment down below if you require any tutorials for the modeling part or just also share with me your 3D renders, the ones that you're doing. If you're a beginner or intermediate, share with me on my Facebook page. Uh, it's DWorks 3D. Uh, follow me, I mean like my page over there. And also please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video. Thank you everyone. Take care. Goodbye.